to the women's show. I am Chetunga Rebecca Juna, and today we discuss mental health issues on the women's show. Butavika Hospital noted that it has been overwhelmed by the numbers, but despite the fact that that is prevalent, we sit and dissect and say, what are the available spaces that you can be able to access mental health care, but what are the causes what is going on in the community? And I'm joined by Janat Katanema, the ED Safe Places Uganda. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rebecca. Mm. And uh, hello, our viewers. Okay. Um, and also, Akilowang Piska. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, and I'm very excited to share my experiences. Okay. Um, I will start with Janat. Mm. How and what is what is causing this whole you know rise and overflow at Butavika Hospital? And also give us um, info about what Safe Places does. Okay, um, thank you, Becky uh, Priska, for joining us. I mean, joining me in this conversation. It's a conversation that we can't cease to have. Mm. Uh, it's a conversation that needs to be had by everyone, and everyone in their spaces should be in position to have those conversations mm. okay so yes i also saw that uh, it was i think uh, uh, on the floor of parliament where mm. there were double numbers and i've also known about it before that the, the numbers they are way past their capacity mm. you know uh, that was initially uh, intended for butarika and uh, i can understand i can understand because different circumstances are prevailing currently from the time of you know the construction of Butavika. And so we can say that uh, the situation currently is not just for Butavika to handle, it's a situation for everyone. Mental health has, is a social problem. It has, it has to come from just the hospital, the National Referral Hospital, which we have, to every other person doing what they have to do. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, private players, you said uh, the idea of safe places. Maybe I can give a brief about safe places. Yes. Um, safe places is a private mental health hospital with hospital status. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we have two centers, one in Shambogo and one in Bujuko. The Bujuko one has a capacity of 50 beds, mm -hmm. uh, 20 for the women and 30 for the men. And you're going to ask me why is yeah. it why 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 aren't they proportionate? Yeah. It's because we want to we wanted to give um like really ideal care mm. to the women. So there is no um skill. We're not saying we're not giving for the men, mm. but come on, it's women led. Yeah. So, so there has to be there has to be an issue in there. Yeah. Safe places is women led. Yeah. So uh, we, we have to be considerate mm. of the special needs, the extra special needs of the women as compared, especially in the welfare department, as compared to the men. Mm. So yes, our inpatient center in Bujuko has capacity, total capacity of 50, and we handle all psychiatric disorders, including um, addictions, and all wow. people know as substance use disorders mm. or behavior disorders, mm. okay? So that is, uh, that is uh, I, I bring that in, in respect that much as Butavika is the only national referral hospital, um, there are other, <laughs> Private, efforts yeah. from private players to help the situation, mm. that, no, the, the, to help deal with the bulk mm. of the numbers that are coming out of the different conditions that are prevailing at the moment, mm. okay? So having said that, why are the numbers? Why are we having these numbers? Then we have to look at what are, the, what are those things that are pushing? We just came from COVID-19. Mm. By the way, if we think COVID-19 ended, it has the, if, the effects are just continuing, you yeah. know? The effects are continuing. And when you look at it, especially for, you know, being a women's show for the women, one of the issues that has come out of the COVID-19 is the economic distress, okay? The economic distress, people are feeling the effects of having not worked for two years mm. or having struggled for that period of time. Some are dealing with issues of having lost jobs yeah. during that course of action, you know, during that period. And the effect, so if a woman is in a state of, of poverty or not having or, you know, of need, the effect that it has on the entire family and their children as well, especially the children, mm. is immense. 
So if there is a struggle by that woman that is a caretaker, then there's a struggle for the entire family. Yeah. So COVID-19 went beyond just the disease to the socioeconomic issues that came thereafter. Mm. Okay. So if you look at it as a bulk, it is one big thing. Yeah. But then also, we need to also start talking about mental health in relation to the family. Because we see that there is a lot of family dysfunction. Mm. There is a lot of family dysfunction. And that family dysfunction affects all the family members mm. individually. And the way it affects a child is not the same way it will affect the, 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 the mother. It's not the same way to affect the father. And so and we see that there are trends that are coming up where there are single-headed families, then where there is a lot of violence in the families, mm -hmm. when there is no time for the families, within the families, where we, because of the frustrations that we are getting from elsewhere in the environment, then the family members are suffering. You see there is excessive anger within their, you know, there is no communication within the families. So the family unit is quite important to someone's well-being and then if it is affected and we see that it is being affected by the different areas then we definitely are going to affect the people's mental health yeah. so we see a lot of children now with no range because we've seen we had a report of a nine-year-old dying by suicide in a school we've had you know the rates of suicide that are happening in mm -hmm. the school the institutions is indicative because you will not say that this person is stressed at the workplace. No, they're not being stressed at the workplace. This person has stress that is carrying or carried, mm. you know, from the family and from the community they come from. Then they go into the school community. Then if there's, co you know, if, are, if the issues are compounded, then you will see, yeah. you know, inability to handle the stresses and the person will die mm. by means, okay. um, you know, available to them. So when we leave the family dysfunction, then there are other issues, of course, that will come about. For example, there is a, being women and, you know, there is a caring role of women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, caring role of women goes beyond just the health, you know, the being at the home place. So we are looking at in issues like palliative care. If a person, like, care in the hospital, care of a sick person, care mm -hmm. of a, need, a person who is in need, it usually falls on the woman. And we are seeing now numbers of uh, cancer patients coming up. And, you know, you can imagine the burden that mm -hmm. has on that woman, you know, who is taking care of. It could be a, an emotional burden, but also mm -hmm. physical, you know, ex physical burden. It can be a financial burden. And if not handled well, that mm -hmm. you might lose the person to a chronic illness yeah. or not lose the person to a chronic illness, but the effect it has had on you mm -hmm. will be long lasting and also affect your mental health. Okay. So that, that is the, the caring role of, of women on that side. Then when we got still, besides the family dysfunction, there is also uh, issues that are happening. I mean, they are occurring because of you being a woman. Mm -hmm. We have for the postnatal, postnatal depressions. We will have uh, the PMS, you know, PMS, mm, yeah. most people they talk about yes, syndrome. Yes, the premenstrual syndrome. They talk, talk about it as if it's an okay thing. But we have seen people that have suffered severe effects of PMS, mm. okay? We have to look at issues like infertility for women, okay? And then we have to look at issues like uh, um, uh, menopause for women. We look at sexual violence for women. And Becky, I'm not saying that women are making up the biggest, I mean, um, yes, women make up the biggest numbers according to research that has been done. They are mm. usually disproportionate to men. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that for a fact it is what it is in Butavika, but because we are on the women's show, I also want to use this opportunity to bring about the specific needs mm -hmm. of the women and the, the, the factors that are leading women into disease or mental illness that could be contributory to the numbers that we are. Mm -hmm. that we are seeing mm -hmm. so those specific ones that are, are, are happening just for the sake of you know you being a woman and you being in a position then we also have um issues to do with uh, the with the uh, early pregnancies so early pregnancies affect these young young mothers and mm -hmm. we know the rates you know yeah. the rates yeah. of early pregnancies you know last week was uh, was uh, i think alliance sexual uh, health and reproductive Alliance Week and the figures that were coming out, the the the, the pregnancies are coming out of rape, defilement, and you know, 
and so they are quite alarming as well. Mm -hmm. So you look beyond that that act and look at the mental health of that of that girl, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then carrying on the cycle of either trauma, carrying on the cycle of you know generational poverty. Because now, if an eighteen year old or a sixteen year from no means then gets pregnant, so you're looking at it's it's, it's going to be a recurring you know mm -hmm. cycle for mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at it in that sense as well, that we should not look at just how the person is gotten out of school. What is it going to be for her, her child, and the generations thereafter to yeah. come, okay? Yeah. So those are just a few of mm. the issues that we could raise, but they're quite a number. There is substance and substances and alcohol, okay? So when we're looking at it, we're saying, so let us not look at the extreme end of poverty and whatever, mm. but then what of this access and exposure mm. to these uh, mind-altering substances mm. that are leading young men and women into addictions, you know, uh, into, into actually mental illness. Some because it goes, goes beyond just one mental illness, other co-occurring issues. So uh, that is also on rampant. If you look at the situation in Uganda, the access that we have, mm or the availability of those substances. And by the way, when you, if we are to talk about the substances as well, Becky, I, I, know, I, I know that we, they, are, they are there, but yeah. also, do, do we have protective factors for mm. these substances? Because mm. if you look at what we have going currently, all the regulations and laws we are trying to get in place to safeguard our generation, our young generation, from mm. getting access to these substances, is still not what we want it to. Mm. If you look at the alcohol control bill, it's still in parliament, it's been in parliament, it's not come out. If you look at the narcotics, um, which was repealed, it's now a bill, okay, it's back. If you look at the tobacco control, when we say that bars shouldn't sell shisha and, and uh, we know yeah. the situation, <laughs> what is there? And how is the implementation going yeah. for that? Yeah. Or if, even if we look at the Mental Health Act, the mm. one which is, you know, regulating care. Mm. How is that? Where is that, you know? Where is it? Beyond hearing about it, have you heard anything about the Mental Health Act? Has there been sensitization? Yeah. Do you know, Piska, about the Mental Health Act and no. the provisions of the Mental Health Act, no. No. you know? So that's what I'm saying, that much as all these other push, we have these factors, then what, what, what are, where are our protective factors? Mm. So we have very many causes. Yeah. yeah, of people getting into disease, yeah. but even those which we should be, be mitigating, some of them, I've only said that, I've only said now that if we were to go to the legislative way, mm. you know, the, the laws that we should be, you know, uh, uh, helping us and curbing the situation, they're all either in bill form or unimplemented, yeah. you know. So that is, that. those are some of the few, mm. of the few, there is grief, unprocessed grief, changes that are happening, you know, yeah, sure. changes that are not managed mm. or sudden losses that we yeah. cannot manage Shocking and handle, events. you know. Yeah. And you know, these days uh, things can happen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when we are yeah. another. Yeah, and so, Janat, I, mm. and I'll come to you a little bit later, Priscilla. Janat, I want us to look at, at palliative care. Yes. How does a caretaker Mm. of a cancer patient, of a person that has a stroke, know that they are getting overwhelmed. Because one of the things that we have seen is we get out there, we look for money. And for me, it's personal. Mm. You look for the money, you have the hope that this person is going to pull through. And today they are fine, tomorrow they are not fine. And you know, even when the doctors tell you this person is going to die, you think, ah, the, you know, God can do miracles. Yes. <laughs> when do we internalize it and say, okay, mm. my cancer patient, even if I've taken them where, even if I've done what, mm. realistically, they're going to die. Okay. And prepare myself for that moment and wait for it. Or the person already spent a lot of money and then you've buried them. And there is no sense of, okay, why did I get my money? Why didn't I let her or like, die in pain? And sometimes you also say, oh, you know, at least she's in a safer place. There is no more pain. And then the worst thing about grief, it hits you when you least expect it to hit you. So when do we know that 
in that moment where we are doing palliative care that that we are getting overwhelmed and then we need to internalize our emotions okay Sorry about your experience. I see this is very personal. Mm. And you see, when we are talking about the numbers of people that are getting hit by this, mm. so if you were to three people here, I also have a personal story about mm. caring for someone who had cancer. Mm. So that you see the numbers are increasing and non, we are not you know, mm. actively dealing with this. Okay, So I think one uh, some of the issues that people that have, people that are in chronic illness should get is they should also get their support on set mm. which support can help them into acceptance and no acceptance cannot be forced we mm. have to beg that that know the, the gods of time to help us with the acceptance as well as healing mm. because you don't say i want to accept this you're human you will always have hope and then you hold this person dear their personal you know so you cannot say, okay, I've accepted this person. This person is not going to be with me. You will have momentarily acceptance. You accept it, and then the next day you're like, but you know, God is a God of miracles. Yes, He's a God of miracles. But then you have to go back to the, you know, the reality. So with time and support, that is the only way that you can get into acceptance and then also get to grieve the person. Mm -hmm while they are here and while they are gone. Because while they're here, people say, why would you grieve someone while they're here? Mm. You look at your person going from a place you didn't ever expect. So imagine if this is your mother and you've seen your mother, the all powerful, you know, female mm. that she is. Mm. And then you see her to the level she can't lift her legs and you see her basically reducing each day. Each day to a person that you do not understand. Mm. You're in grief, grieving of the loss of the person that you knew, but you don't want to talk about it because you see culture tells us that uh, you, 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 you know, you'll be, um, jix, uh, I don't know, like you, as if uh, you, you bring it about. When we talk about death in mm. our culture, mm. it's like prohibited. You can't talk about death before a person is going to die. But we need to have that support. You need to support. When I said support, it can be support of your support system, but also professional support. Mm. Okay, professional support during the knowing, during the period of working, during the loss and thereafter. So the other thing is you said, well, how do you know when you're overwhelmed? I don't think that a person who, whose loved one has been um, diagnosed with a chronic illness should wait to be overwhelmed. Even just a diagnosis is overwhelming. So you will not yeah. say that now I'm going to wait for the period when I'm overwhelmed. Even just that, you are already overwhelmed. It, the, the, the diagnosis scares, you know. Because I remember when we were told that our mother was, uh, our mother, my mother-in-law had uh, something. You know, that even the diagnosis, it just sounds in a way. So you need support there and then. then. You do not wait for get for you to get overwhelmed yeah. so under an individual level if you are the person that is going through i know it is a very difficult time mm -hmm. it's a very difficult period but also what i keep telling people is you do not want to lose that person and lose yourself as well because yeah. there are also other people that they are after mm -hmm. and i know it's cliche we say self-care well how can you take self-care well how can you talk about self-care when you're nursing a person there are no resources to do self-care. You know, you even don't have time. Mm. Some Sometimes you have to do the hospital round mm. day in, day out, day out, you know, and you're the only care. You even get physically fatigued, okay? So, but what, what we have to know, Becky, is eventually you are still alive. Much mm. as you have someone who is in a severe state of disease, you are still, still alive. alive. So you do not have to do very big things, okay? We can start by thinking positive. Remind ourselves every other day, even when the hopelessness comes in, hold on to that positive. Yeah. Just have that faith, positive attitude. Be hopeful about it. Do your self-talk. Reaffirm yourself. Oh, you the know? person is going to be okay or oh, I am doing good. For for that it can be now, it can be two ways. It can be into acceptance of the okay. I, I am doing the best for this person while they are in this situation. Mm. Okay, I'm doing the best for this person while. Mm. Okay, mm. I know if uh, even if the person died, because I have a thing, I, I, at least I've given the best care that to my abilities to that I would have given. Mm. That you know, uh, you've reached your limit of extending. You have done 
the best, that you should appreciate you, you then, there, and then, okay? Even when there is improvement of a person, mm -hmm. even if it's as slight as the person moved their finger, okay? So for example, if a person is in coma, for you, you count it as a positive. The person has moved their word, their mm -hmm. finger. So you intentionally look out for that because you are surrounded by negative. You're mm -hmm. basically seeing this as the dire situation. What can you look out for in the dire situation to, 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 to at least bring about some little sunshine mm -hmm. within you, mm -hmm. okay? So that is it. Then you also have to steal a few moments for you. I know you say you're the one on duty, yes, but you can steal a few moments for you to help with a physical exhaustion, but also mm -hmm. take a breath to breathe, okay? And come back on, 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 on ground. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those things happen to you and as if you're in a movie, you don't know so fast. Yeah, you know, so fast. everything is happening around you yeah. and you, you, you don't have the reality of it. But you're actually a key player mm. in that what is happening down there. So the other thing is you, can, you have to stay connected with your support system. You have to stay connected. Let the people that are in your life, we have circles. Let them know what you're going through. Mm. Okay, they will not understand to the extent, but at least they will, each one will come through in a way that they can come yeah. through. Even if it's a phone call, a phone call will take five to ten minutes. For those five to ten minutes, they've taken you off from some place that where you you are sitting with your mm. thoughts mm. to maybe a positive, you know, a positive thought. And then the other thing is, yes, as you said, we are human beings. Hold on to the faith. Faith can be yes, this person is going through this, but it will end soon, and the suffering will end. That is faith. Okay, faith is God knows best. Mm. Faith is um, I'm doing the best that I can. Hold on to that. The, the, the bigger thing, when we're overwhelmed by things that we do not understand at the moment, mm. we have to have faith that there is someone that is in control yeah. of that to make the blow less painful. So those are just some of the few things mm. that a person that can do. Yes, it comes also with financial distress. distress yeah. It comes with financial distress. The person is taking care of, but also not only are you taking care of the person physically, emotionally, mm. whatever, but you also have to look for the resources. So where you can get support from your communities, like workplaces, you know, community of friends, relatives, mm. get the support. Yeah. Get the support. There is no pride in death. When, you know, when you're saying that you, I'm going to do it on my own and then you, you're also getting, affecting your health. Yeah. And so it's not a good thing. Then thereafter, the grief. Grief needs to be handled as well. There is nothing like they want to be grief. Grief is when we think on those memories of the person that mm. we've had or the thing that we have lost. By the way, we can also grieve things. Okay, it's yeah. just the magnitude of what you're grieving. So grief also needs to be handled, needs to be processed. You know, you need to go through the process of healing. Mm. Otherwise, when you say it hits you when you least expect, yes, when it hits you, at least when you have got support, you know how to handle yeah. that, that episode when it comes to you. Mm. Yeah, so palliative care, I think I will okay. stop there. Thank you so much. Um, I, you know, I want to talk to you the whole day because <laughs> <laughs> it's a very broad thing, but mm. let me come to you, Priska. What would you tell someone are the first signs of depression? A woman out there and say, okay, you are getting depressed as a person that has experienced this. Yeah, um, I think my, my, my experience around this particular topic is quite broad. Mm -hmm. uh, but first of all, I really want us to recognize the fact that uh, life is filled with a lot of transitions. Mm. Like she said, there's so many, there's so many things around us that happen. And you see, these are things that we will not say, we will not wake up and say, oh, this will not happen. Oh, I'll not become a mother. Mm. Because even the transition from being the girl with, I mean, it's just about you to becoming a mother is also a whole experience. Mm. You won't say, I will not lose my my parents, I will not lose my loved ones. Um, a lot of things that happen, a series of things that happen in our lifetime that honestly, they might happen and in that moment, you just don't know how to respond. You just don't know how to go about it. Mm. And that's why you find people have so many things piled, piled that they they have, they have failed to move. They have failed to understand that 
now it's a time that I'm no longer the me that was maybe when my my dad was around it it's no longer now the me when I, it was just about me and all those things mm-hmm. so you find that uh, a lot of transitions are going to happen in our lives and honestly it's not it happens differently for mm-hmm. everyone the the effects or even the the good things about it might come in different in different ways for mm-hmm. everyone and what that means is that we will need to cope we'll need to find mechanisms on how to approach these things mm. so what that's where you find that are uh, for most young people and for most women the the approach will be different i'll give an example i have i have met a couple of girls who have been are uh, sexually molested and and for them even the processing alone that this happened it took them 7 years mm. so you find that they've carried on this for 7 years to even accept that this happened it's like hard so uh first of all i think we need to recognize that these things happen mm. and we need to extend a certain grace to ourselves you need to start uh you find that when things happen people mm. actually run back to punching themselves that mm. maybe yeah, i'm the reason yeah. this happened you get and now it starts every other uh, i have a friend who one time said that when you start connecting the dots they will connect mm. you find that someone maybe they have been taking care of their patient their loved one mm. and maybe they took a call one day and they came back and something had happened like like, like she said mm. things happen so fast sometimes mm. and something had happened but when they are taken only a call of 5 minutes maybe that call was to fill their cup again and then they came back and something had happened so you find that for the rest of their life or for a very long time mm-hmm. it's going to be about those five minutes that they were mm-hmm. not around mm-hmm. and yet honestly these are the moments that you also maybe needed to get a certain reaffirmation that it's going to be okay it's going to be uh, i mean things are going to be better let's be grateful for what is even mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. you get so let's not be so hard on ourselves because things happen mm. and it cannot be because of you honestly mm. maybe it was predetermined to happen or even if it wasn't there was nothing in that moment that you could do to stop it so let's go so slow on ourselves i have met girls because honestly i working with young women who have been violated you've met them where they actually do not think about the other person it's about them mm-hmm. not being so, in the right place yeah. it's about them not knowing who to relate with it's about them not having the right state over of understanding about what what this person was going to do how do how do you start blaming yourself about what someone was thinking mm. it cannot be that so for me is can we start accepting that sometimes it's not really about you or even if it was about you start extending that grace to yourself that i could not determine what was going to happen i cannot control what was going to happen around me and what that means that you start accepting that now i need to move on i need to go to a different place to a different realm mm. so you find that it's easier on your end mm. to accept that i lost my father or this happened to me or this happened to me and then you start healing healing happens the moment you start accepting i i know she agrees to that because she's a, a mental health specialist it starts happening from the moment you agree or you accept that this happened and i cannot have absolutely control about it mm. so from there you start uh, seeing yourself uh, outgrow mm. certain things you've seen people that self harm mm. as an effect of depression or mental health it mm. can be in a place where they are still getting there you've seen themselves but because in that moment they feel like it's done you get mm. but if we accept that it's not me you will find yourself are uh, outgrowing certain habits mm. there are people that are have become ad- addicts because of things that have happened around them and you know addiction drug addiction can can also be that the the one that will drive you mm. to become very i mean to that place where you actually really really need the uh, the like the acute medical attention that is available for mental health but it can be avoided because there are people who go for it because they're not being heard in their maybe 
in their families they need someone to talk to or uh, if we give scenarios of uh, of children that are like young people who, that having so many things are happening in their families so they cannot take it in anymore can we allow ourselves not to really worry about things that are not that we cannot control mm. so for me it's a uh, acceptance it's hard it's not easy i say that i have told you there are people that even take seven years or even more but in that run allow ourselves to accept that certain things it's not really mm. are you it's not about you or transitions happen in yeah. life yeah because yeah? yeah. they will happen along the way a lot will happen okay thank you so much i'll come back to you janat yes and we will go to the fact of family dysfunction um one of the things i learned was that the family is the first point of interface that you get with the world and then mm. when you get out of the world to the world then you bring your values from home to mm. the community and also the community influences your decision making but if you're grounded at home which is our support system our mothers our sisters are our support systems or mm. our kids are presumed to be our support systems so when the family is broken um most of the times they are traits you adopt from the community you find that women and I'm, I'm going to tell you this because we tend to be the ones that we don't know how to fight using the hands or what but women will emotionally abuse children things like olimusiru ngachitawo toina magezi ngabe wachitawo she's trying to tell the man when he's seated there that um, but you're the not child. a good person then the child throws a cup down and then he starts then when you find that maybe the the baby that is brought in the home is out of wedlock here like child abuse of beating the child and they get scars mm. um this woman also is dealing with something but there's that projected anger on the yeah. on the on the child mm. and then the child later on we see suicide you know thoughts suicidal thoughts among children i saw a child say i'm stressed and like what would be stressing <laughs> a child honestly i thought you play and be happy mm. and eat candy how do we go back to our families and tell our mothers and even ourselves mm. as women mm. that despite the challenges we are having maybe stress maybe domestic violence our mouth should mm. not harm the children because spirituality tells us that our mothers are the givers of life and when she says something to you it comes to pass so she's the first person you interact with in the mm. world that gives you esteem and therefore she can break it you find the child is struggling with low self esteem mm. yeah they are taking if they are teenage boys they are there experimenting on drugs or to fill that void what are we going to do for mothers and sisters <laughs> the, the because women are the foundation mm, of the home mm, mm. to ensure that the children are not having issues around mental health illness thank you thank you very much becky for that you're already telling them you're mm. telling them to use their mouths for to build and to grow mm. instead of to destroy and mm. to kill you know Uh, you're already saying it and I will also add my voice to it mm. but while I'm adding my voice to it I also do not want to discount the role that the fathers play in mm. that family unit mm. because it can't all be the mother, the mother yeah. okay because we've also seen where the mother is very nurturing but the influence of one as you know that for us we learn in psychology that the, the, we have we attach we uh, the different sexes of children attached to the opposite sexes of their parents mm. okay so that's why you find that if a child has a father that is maybe uh, if a girl child that has a father that is maybe um, promiscuous you find that that will affect her in a way she attaches in her adult life or the values that she holds towards uh, the, the male gender mm. or the behavior that eventually she adopts same thing for the boy child to the mother you know so so we, while we are telling that woman out there that the tank should be for building we are also saying the hand should be also for nurturing mm. because we are saying that it's only the hand but we see excessively that it is also 
the hand that comes in. It should also be for nurturing. Let it not be for hurting and harming yeah. for that. But also, then there's the other thing that we need to break generational trauma, okay? We need to yeah. break, be that woman who is hearing, who is ready to heal. When you heal yourself, Becky, you're going to be a mother if you wish to, you know, Priska, if those are choices available to you, then you will be a mother. So what kind of mother are you going to be, yeah. you know, for your child? You might not have so much control over your mother, mm. okay? Mm. Because that one, you see, with even the different generations, you can tell your mother, you, you really beat me, she said, and I will beat you more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, why, why are you yeah? crying? I've just yeah. started beating you, why are you crying? Yes, you see, yeah. oh, something of the sort, hey, I didn't beat you a lot, mm. you know? I only just gave you a few. Mm. So you see that we might not have control over that, but we can have control over what we can do thereafter. Mm. But also I want to take it from there and say, so if the child escapes the home with all this trauma and they're going into a community of school, then what are we doing as the school, you know, as, uh, as the, the, the education system? Because they spend a lot of time also in the community of the ed education of schools. And you say that you, a child told you they were stressed. I am so happy about that child telling you they're stressed. At least they have an idea. Mm. But that is only one. That's why you are shocked. Is to, how can a child be stressed? A child can be stressed. The children f feel and uh, mean share the same emotions as adults. They might not be able to name them, to identify them, to know how to manage them, but they share the same mm. emotions because they are, after all, human. Okay. Yeah. So also looking at when the child goes into that school environment, can we have that information on mental health available to them? Yeah. Do we have the resources of the people, the resource persons? Mm. that can be able to ably support these children while in there and there. Because we're saying, okay, so this person mm. has left home, uh, home is, is not okay, maybe the people at home are not in position to know, then they've gone into the education system. Can we then, while they're there, find a solution to their mental health challenges? Currently, the, you know the, the statistics coming out of the school, you know, the schools mm. and all that. Because you know we are, suicide is alarming, but it's at least the end, the end one. You know mm. it's alarming, and that's why it's now being talked about. But there are other issues, even in the schools, mental health issues. There is a lot of anxiety in children. Mm. There is yeah. depression. There are other unrecognized or the ones we are not talking about that are within the schools. Can they then be helped? Can they be helped while they are there to mm. first of all get to know what is mental health? What is mental illness? How can they protect themselves? Mm. How can they mm. handle in the event that they are not in a state of wellness? Mm. And then can they be able to support someone else, you know, while they're in that situation? For that to happen, we need to have targeted interventions for schools. Yeah. If it's counselors and psychologists in schools, they need to be in those places. If it's the curriculum that needs to avail time as well as resources mm. for that initiative to take off, then we need to, so that we can then handle it while it is at that stage. Mm. Then when the person becomes an adult, then there also should be resources available to them. Online resources, uh, spaces that they can go to, healthcare uh, units that they can seek help from, both private and government. Mm. So we're looking at this child beyond the home unit. Home is very important, So, but what if it's not enough? Mm -hmm. Can we go to the next unit? Can we go to the next unit? Can we see that we have this person get support at all levels? Mm -hmm. If it's a workplace, can we then have the workplaces bring interventions to help this person mm -hmm. that has maybe carried on trauma from childhood and they have not been able to you know, work on it or anything? Can there be resources available to them mm -hmm. in the workplace where they can seek professional help? help and then it helps them heal backwards mm. yes thank you thank you man so much I want to share something. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah um i want to talk about the generational Trump. parenting mm. yeah uh you realize when she was say speaking i think about the fact that we have not been raised right and what that means is that you will not raise what what it would look like if you, you have not sought for help would mean that you would also extend that very same mm. parenting to your children and it, it carries on and on and on that she said but also I think what we would do then in, in that place is that when you recognize that actually there is mental health because I know at the time of our mothers 
maybe these are things that they were never open to talk about. Mm. You would deal with your things by yourself. You find that they would even prevent or they would stop mm. mothers or people to talk about things that would happen maybe in a home setting. Mm. It's about your home and please let it stay in our mm. home. But that's not how things are supposed you to be. Moon, you tell it uh-huh. to but mm. I don't think it's a right statement to make because people are someone make I mean wobanga kale binjo ebyo mundu te bitotoa kati abera again what are they going to do then what is going to happen they're going to carry it within themselves and they will transition it to to children that's why you find children are being beaten a child has grown up knowing that for them they can never amount to anything when did we reach there how how can we empower our children mm. with the right words with the I, I don't know if we notice, I, I, mean, I mean, it's the African parenting style, but if we notice is that from uh, other continents, parenting is a different story. Children are raised with the right esteem. But here you find someone that positivity, planting it in them at age 30, it's something entirely new. You even tell them, hey, I miss you. I, I love you. I care about you. Yeah, like, and what for do you them, want? Exactly. <laughs> hey. It looks like it's so strange. You find our, we have been in a setting where you interact with children who have been in a family, a family setting where they've been cared for. They've been are uh, affirmed by the right words. Mm. And they extend that to you. And you think it's a different story. Mm. You, th- you really see it as a, something so strange. But this is how we're supposed to parent our kids. The self-esteem cannot... I mean, there are very few adults who come out and they maybe help themselves get to that place. Mm. But most of most people will actually get stuck to the setting of you're stupid, to the setting of you can never do this. You cannot do this. You tell your parents, I want to be this. And they see it so strange. At, at our home, we are this, we are stuck in this. You cannot be something beyond that. Mm. It is so wrong. And I feel that the, the narrative of African parenting is so wrong mm. that it has killed the esteem of so many young people. Yeah. Young people are dealing with these things mm. because they've actually come in a home setting that has constantly told them that you're this. And that's how it's going to be. Mm. So can we change it? Especially, I mean, young people, can we change it for our generation? Mm. Can that generation of bad parenting stop on what happened behind you? Can it change for you and for the generations that are to come after you? Mm. So for me, it's it's, it's a long shot, but it's one that will save even Mm. in the future. So yeah. Thank you so much, Priska. And I'll I'll throw this out to both of you. Um, we in the current situation that we are in, I never knew that if I grew up, eh, the finances would be this tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, people are losing jobs. Exactly. People have the ex the, the cost of living is a little bit high, yeah. but the salaries are not increasing. Then mm-hmm. we are having the palliative care. Then you are having children going to school. Yeah. How best? And I will start with you, Janat. Can somebody that is dealing with economic distress seek help? Because if you're to look at members of parliament, those people are under a lot of stress distress. <laughs> because the needs at the community level is high, but also the needs to also attend to their families, but also the money is not there and they have to perform. And you know, they, they, you find their opponent saying, that one is a mad person <laughs> <laughs> because of the things they are doing. But in reality, is, is they are mentally ill because of the stress that is happening. Mm. How best can somebody deal with that? Okay. So, um, Becky, if I get you correct, how best can a person in financial distress be able to take care of their mental health? Yes. Or is it to do something with the financial distress? <laughs> Can people then learn f- better financial planning? Management. <laughs> Management and financial planning. Even yeah, if it's there, Big. somebody can have it. Eh? But <laughs> yeah. the shock, yeah. for example, you've just lost your job and voila. Mm. Sometimes you even have the money, but you're like, so, ah, what will happen in the Somebody next gets months? sick. You see what we're talking yes, about, cancer. Yes, yes. You have the money, you mm. have everything. And you know, you go to hospital and they tell you you have cancer. Uh, and, and then the money stayed, starts running. Mm, 
I think I read somewhere uh, where it said that in Africa we are one hospital bill away from yes. from, it's from poverty very, yeah. and from like you know from brokenness. Yeah. Uh, from brokenness. Yeah. So um, I think for a number of reasons, mm. as an as an individual, that we know that stress mm. stress is in, comes in different forms, but it's a reaction. It's a, a reaction to stimuli in the mm. environment. Mm. Okay, mm. and uh, this stimuli is not usually negative stimuli like and uh, maybe your, your overworked or things yeah. like that mm. okay and stress is part of life even when we are defining uh, mental health mental health is your ability to manage the everyday stresses there is a part on managing the everyday stress stresses mm. of life that they that should, it's not the absence of the stress that stress will be there but how do you manage that stress that comes within your environment mm. so i always like starting with self-awareness Okay, I like starting with self-awareness that if, if we invested in knowing ourselves, in knowing what is in, in and out of ourselves, then, then we can know when something is going wrong in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when you start from a point of not knowing, it will just come, come at you without you knowing mm -hmm. and then you will see that you people are now saying that you're behaving you like you said you know you're behaving in ways that are not that okay, are not normal but yeah. you won't know yourself okay yeah. so that is one then the other thing you just I talked about people might who might have money but they're not and then i also want to say that happiness or health should not be hinged on only on the possession or having mm. money there is so much that we can get from the environment that can still give us pleasure and make us satisfied and happy um, besides money. Then someone will laugh and say, all those things need money. They yeah. all don't need money. Yeah. Some actually yeah. do not need money. Mm. So for example, <coughs> belonging. You know, belonging and, uh, you know, oh. support systems. Yeah. They do not need, some money. of them do not. You need to nurture them. If it's your family unit, your family might need, yes, needs that can be met by money, but they're so emotional needs mm. that, needs to be, that need to be met by your presence, physical presence. And I get this a lot that, you know, when we were younger and we didn't think about it, that mm. women would say that, ah, um, the man is not here. The yeah. man is not here. Yeah. So then the man would say that, but do you want me to be there without money? Yes. And then you say, but what do you want? You want me to go look for the money or you <laughs> oh, want me to come and sit here. with you? But yeah. I want both. Yeah. Yeah, you have to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do both. The person is not available. Yes. And then they say, I sent you money. Yes. What do you want me for? So, so, they so both do both. Yes. Yeah. Were, so we want more than just money. Mm. So when you look at the wheel of wellness, if you look at the person now, being well, mm. well is beyond just the, the ability to have finances or the financial uh, wellness, mm. okay? You will have the emotion where a person wants to be understood. Mm. Someone will tell you that, you know, I had my only issues, I have no, I'm not been, being understood by these yeah. people. And you know, being yeah. unheard, being understood, then it carries on and carries on, okay? So there is a, the emotional needs. Then there, there are spiritual needs. You need to also have, be anchored, you know, be anchored into some, onto something. Mm. There, are, there are the physical needs. It goes beyond that. Can you do the physicals? You know, can you be able to be in place to cater for your outward body? Mm. You know, the things. Then there is a belonging. I said belonging, social belonging. You need to belong, even if it's you belong to one or two. Because he mm. said, you know, friends. When you adult, you don't have enough time for. You don't have to have a whole a football team mm. of your inner circle. You can have two, three, but are they filling your cup? Mm -hmm. You know, are they filling your cup? So I think if you look at it and you look at the different aspects of where you need to be, if it's the financial that is stressing you, can we do something about it, you know, about mm -hmm. the financial bit of it? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that answers your question. It because it really does. It's even very broad. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I also want to ask you, mm. how does a person deal with numbness? Mm. You have experienced a lot of maybe disappointment, mm. then you add on trauma. I think you have not maybe processed, I don't know what to call it, mm. but how does a person, or how do I help a person that is dealing with numbness? They are numb. Becky, you might not be in position, you as mm. yourself, to help that person, but you can ask that person to seek help, professional mm. help. Let the person seek a counselor, a psychotherapist, or if you see that there are other things beyond being numb, mm. 
-hmm. then the person can see a psychiatrist as well mm -hmm. okay whoever they can access let them access a professional counselor if for example mm -hmm. becky you went to a psychologist or a psychotherapist and i realized that you need needs to have a psychiatrist it has to go that mm. so it, whichever way they can seek professional help because we know that there are people who can get out of their poor mental health on their own but then there are those who do not mm. you know, someone will say that does everyone who I, had, I went through a season but then mm. i didn't have to see a counselor good for you that is good you know we thank god you are able to get out but there will be that one who won't be able to get out and instead of worsening you rather then go and and get help when mm. it is still there. Mm. You will ask wh where is the help, and you said the help was expensive. I think we, during the break you said the help was expensive. There are also communities that are free, you know. Mm. So, for example, we, there are the, the spaces for women. Safe Places holds um, a free women support group. Mm. We've been holding it weekly every Saturday, but because of the demands of of life, someone says I can't every Saturday sacrifice. So we've made it once every Saturday, the last mm. Saturday, free of charge. Wow. You know, month. every month, free of charge. That is at our Chambogo branch. Mm. You know, but there are also other communities. I know that there is a, a, a colleague of mine, Rita, also holds a space for suicide survivors. Um, for for you know, for it's free of mm. charge. Those. Then there will be those where you contribute a little, but there will also be online community, yeah. you know? There will be online community. Then there are all these conversations, any conversation that you think will be helpful for your mental health. Mm. It doesn't have to be that it is very expensive. And then mm. where are you can? Because now even insurance is coming on board. For, for safe places, we currently mm. have about four insurers. We have uh, Prudential, uh, Sunlam, Liberty, and minute and we are hoping that others can come on as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. so where you have your medical card you know you don't have to only wait for uh, malaria and whatever when you feel there is something that is not okay with you i started with self awareness you feel something is not okay yeah pay a visit mm -hmm. have someone to talk to before you know before things uh, escalate and go to other levels mm -hmm. Of, of disease mm. and then there are also um, be, beyond the online support the, the free support groups and there is a private support support group then then there are coping mechanisms that mm. an individual has to do mm. you know has to undertake to be able to at least keep in the realm of mm. good mental health yeah yeah, yeah. there is something you talked about about wanting to be hard mm. where you find either a child in the family or at a workspace or in the community where somebody keeps saying, okay, this is, before even they get to suicide, you know, um, thoughts, they keep addressing the problem and saying, mm. this is what I'm feeling, this mm. is what is wrong. And somebody says, that's nothing. You're rotating around nothing. Ah, you'll be fine. You can just, you know, that dismissal of not hearing this person's voice, or this is not my, this is not my docket or you're not my child, or you're not my, just need somebody to talk to. Even with children, you see that, you know, when you, you're out there in the community, they come and tell you funny things and you just have to agree. Mm. But you find people saying, no, this is not my problem. And then we have where the person now actually commits suicide and they're like, but what did this person also want? How best as can we as a community mm. listen to people mm. when they are bringing out issues that are affecting them? Mm. Yeah. So, Becky, you're talking about community mental health. Yeah. Okay. And we need community mental health so that we can do aware cause awareness mm. for starters. Mm. You see, when the person is dismissing that person, they don't know any better. Yeah. Okay, they need to get to know. Mm. That is why we, uh, one of the, if, if I were to do recommendations, we need social workers, we need psychologists, community psychologists mm. in the community doing sensitization on the different, you know, to the different people about mental health, mm. you know. So that if a person comes to you, if a child comes to you and says that I am feeling a certain way, your, your default will not be to dismiss that child. Mm. You know, you are aware that if a person comes, that you're even aware about feelings and emotions or thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because some of those things are say, ah, you know, you want to transport your experience to, to another person. You don't know that we are individual and special. Mm -hmm. So for me, I can say that for a community to get to know, they have to be educated. Okay, they have to be educated. Mm -hmm. And that is when these awareness uh, cre uh, sessions come in. Mm -hmm. Awareness can be in groups, physical, it can be like this show that we are doing. 
You know, if a person gets to know that actually when a person comes to you and tells you anything, mm -hmm. there could be an issue there. You just listen, okay? Just listen. The other would be that I would urge even just not everyone, everyone to be a listener, you know? Listen and be your sister's keeper. That one is key. If your sister comes to you for any issue, I know that we're also overwhelmed on our own. We have, you know, we say we're in this economy. Yeah. Yeah? We're also overwhelmed on our own. Economy. <laughs> economy. But, but you see, if a person has, or holds you in trust mm. and comes to you, or you know you're in position for that person to be, then you listen. Listen and within your means, support the person to the best. And if you can't, then refer to refer. the next level yeah yes thank you thank you so much janet you have so much information yeah. i will come to you priska and ask you how best because we know that depression is it has its causes or it leads to certain things mm -hmm. and we have women in homes that are emotionally abused they're also having you know sisters that have been emotionally abused even at workplaces yeah. where um somebody preys on you the person just decides, decides, okay, I'm going to pray on this person, they are naive, and then breaks this woman, and the next thing, they gaslight them, and the next thing, she's either withdrawing herself into a room and not opening up spaces, yeah. or she runs what they call crazy. That woman is a crazy woman. That woman is like that. How best can we ensure that we, we, we comfort these women and address their issues? And tell them, okay, hey, you are abused emotionally. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, like I said earlier, uh, it, it will transition, it will manifest mm. In, mm. in very many ways. Mm. And that's why you'll find that uh, you find people are a bit about themselves. Mm. And, and you see, it's not so hard to actually recognize that someone actually needs help. Mm. You find that they are bitter about themselves, they are bitter about, they are so negative about mm. life and about their community or anything mm. that is around them. Because we have seen it in so many ways, but also personally I've been in that place mm. where I, like nothing really mattered. Like I didn't care about anything. Mm. I would be like, it's, you transition the, the, the negativity to everyone around you. Mm. And I remember someone stating that uh, when within you, you are so scattered, when everything around you is just scattered, or I mean, you cannot look for things on the outside of you and find them. You see even the void that we carry mm. from the experiences that we, we have lived mm. that is on, is on the inside of us, it are uh, getting that out or getting that away. It's not ab about the things that are, it's not about you having to pride in the things that you have, like money, like a, a good job or anything uh, around you. It's, it's, it comes from within you. And that's why they say when you start looking for things outside of you, it will be so hard to find it. So it's when it comes from within you to accept that. But how do we help the community around us and the women around us to actually get to that place? You see, um, we cannot call down the, the bad things that are happening in people's lives or the, neg the things that are happening around them mm -hmm. by, by brushing them away, like she said, uh, by showing someone that God, you're over your this, over your that. Stop being negative. You cannot tell someone, hey, stop being negative. Stop shouting at people. Be before understanding where they're coming from. Yeah. Most times they're coming from a certain place. So, um, can we extend a certain listening ear to people? If someone is negative or if someone is so, so bitter about life, find uh, one time, find and put, like, put them in a corner and just ask them what is wrong. Very calmly, by the way. Because you see, it's easy for someone to actually recognize that, eh, this person, how, wh why did they even take the initiative, initiative to bring me here and talk to me? Most times they will open up to you. Mm. And when they open up, they, are, they, they will automatically start to feel that someone is listening to them. Mm. They will feel hard more than it was before. But when the bitterness is, is uh, prolonged and people actually around you just keep 
telling you how you're bitter or some people even detach from you you lose friends you lose like you start being in your own corner it 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 keeps growing it keeps growing and when it grows it it becomes if it now starts to enter you that's why you find someone has actually gone from just being bitter but also by self-harming by doing all these things that hurt them so uh in our community or as women can we be our our sisters helpers can we fix their crowns by extending that listening ear people are looking for someone to listen to them in homes if it's a if it's a workplace you might find no one twali twali muntu these are even their own bosses if it's in homes you will find that uh, they are, they can't talk to their parents their parents are very bitter or they're so negative they can't talk to their sisters or anything else but as a community can we take initiative mm. to be kind to other people Thank if you so find someone is bitter can you be the one that speaks kind words to them can you speak life into them but in a very calm way don't reciprocate that negativity and bitterness thank you so much priska and within our parting shots i want us within one microsecond mm. to give our parting shots your parting shots and which are recommendations mm. so that's to government and to community mm. okay so thank you so much rebecca mine are going to be systematic to the government can we have a national agenda mm. towards mental health can it be an agenda that can be streamlined where we can streamline uh or mainstream uh mm. mental health in all government policies and and you no know, and initiatives mm. that is the government to the parliament can we have the laws that the bills that are in parliament that mm. are related to mm. uh protective factors of mental health come out mm. okay still to the government one one more to the government can they be support to private players because even i know civil society is also doing something private players civil society so that they can work together mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a, an interjet, i mean it's a connected system mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is uh, promoting mental health mm -hmm. in in society to the community interest yourself mm -hmm. interest yourself in what is happening because you're part of the community you as an individual in your capacity can you do that which you can do to uh, grow another person or to heal another person then to individuals we have intrinsic abilities can we call upon those intrinsic abilities you know if the intrinsic we, if you're not able to call upon our innate abilities mm. then can we seek professional help we don't have to die to prove that we are strong mm. so seek professional help it is available to you and you can look for those resources and get the help that you need and to the women out there you're strong mm. okay but you're being strong doesn't mean that you die Mm -hmm. your, your society has conditioned you to be strong but it seems even seeking for help is strength yeah. thank you very much thank you so much janat and priska your parting shots in a micro yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much uh, i have really enjoyed to have having shared my experiences but also to talk about to talk to someone out there i know this show can cannot go without co uh, communicating or reaching out to someone there mm. what we have shared here could be the sign mm. if it has touched you if it has are, are i mean if you feel directly connected to what has been shared here that is a sign that you actually need help mm. so step out of your way and seek help start with maybe recognizing that and from there if you need professional help go out there and seek for it if you need to talk to someone find that person that can listen to you mm. talk to them are by sharing it it it, take, it gets a long way it takes you to a certain place mm. it's not bad to share don't die with it don't be with it don't let it grow so uh, and also for women out there we 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 do we are, in fact the word strong me when i'm told that i'm strong i don't like it because honestly there's a lot that comes in between there that breaks us that makes us feel like we're not doing enough mm. don't reach that place let let some be get a punching bag it could be a person mm -hmm. or it could be your therapist or it could be as i i as you understanding that you need help and seeking for it don't die with it there's a lot of help out there people are actually around you and they want to listen to you thank you and all the best thank you so much it's been a refreshing conversation it has been timely it has rejuvenated my spirit and within our wrap up we'll ask the women to have some self-care time 
self-love time to take care of their mental health, but also to know that they are only human. You are a human being. You're not a supernatural God. But also to remind the RDCs in the communities that these bars that open at 7 a.m. and close at 7, maybe a.m. in the morning again, could you help us so that our brothers and, sis our brothers and sisters in these bars can get a little bit productive, get them out of the bars, talk to them, you know, have community dialogues that, you know, address why they are in the bar early in the morning. Eh, they are going and stealing their wives' beans and selling them just to go back to the bar. Can we address the issue of addiction to alcohol in our communities so that we can ensure that women are safe because when we have more drunkards and less of the productive men, we are losing out on productivity of labor. We also remind those that are grieving that it's a process and that you need to take your time. If you can get some priority, if you're doing palliative care, Get the counselor, look for the nearest person near you to take one step at a time. Life is a journey. And until next time, I'm Chetunga Rebecca Juna. Bye-bye.